and uh, you'll have to pardon my attire. I just got back from a run. And I'm back just in time for the Jamstack Conf. So with just under 10 minutes to go, um, how fitting is it that I'm going to do a lightning talk on performance? All right, let's go. Join me. So formalities aside, my name is Henri. I'm a freelance developer in Toronto, greatest city on the planet. Henri Helvetica is my Twitter handle and Instagram handle, but it's not my real last name. And yes, I do run the Jamstack Toronto meetup, so I'm super happy to be here. Now, speaking of... I'm going to brag for a second, but I think I have the best logo around. And in fact, whenever you see that uh, camera in the top right corner and you see a jiggle like that, that means you should take a screenshot and share it on Twitter. So thank you very much. Now, closing, I'd like to thank the good people at the Jamstack conference for inviting me. I saw that email come in. It was a delightful surprise. So I'm super happy to be here and sharing some information. So let's go. And performance for all. Understanding a lighthouse score. Now, Performance, I used to call it a bit of a dark art, but luckily I'm here to shed a bit of this bright light so everyone can understand it. Since the mid-2000s, uh, we've made much effort in understanding performance. Um, we considered pretty much a user experience story. But user experience is kind of an intangible, wouldn't you say? Um, we needed a fix to create tangible metrics, uh, metrics that could in fact reflect the UX. And with that being said, after a decade of much iterations, we we're able to create significant tooling, tooling like Firebug, very influential. About 2007 came out. Um, I believe it was Joe Hewitt. Uh, we didn't have tools like Wiseslow that gave out performance grading for pages on performance, obviously. Shout out uh, Steve Souders. Uh, we also had tools like, or still have tools like web page tests, a pat meaning creation that is basically considered the Cadillac of performance testing. Uh, and of course, if you use a browser, you use browser dev tools, hopefully, but very powerful tooling uh, within dev tools to debug uh, on a performance level. But we are here talking about Lighthouse. Now, Lighthouse launches a sequence of audits, including the famed uh, performance score. Now, in this performance score, I find people like to post it a lot on Twitter. In fact, sometimes they're kind of bragging. Um, here we have Wes Boss talking about he did a little bit of uh, work uh, using Gatsby and uh, ended up with 99 score. I mean, that might be a Canadian Wayne Gretzky thing. I don't know. But then you have people like Guillermo here of Next.js and Vercel fame talking about some of the scores that he was able to um, uh, achieve and here reflecting across the globe. And speaking of international, uh, we had someone here who had just discovered uh, Lighthouse through a, uh, I believe it was a workshop, and he was pleasantly surprised with the score he was able to achieve with a little bit of work. Now, speaking of scores, let's talk about the Lighthouse score. Um, it's calculated by way of metrics. Now, metrics are measurements, yes, uh, but the Lighthouse score is governed by weights and measures, and the metrics are weighted differently and thus some are going to be more important than others. Now, let's bring up an example. I talked about earlier that you know I'm a runner. Uh, earlier this year, I was able to do a 128.30, uh, 21K run at 411 pace. Now, once upon a time, the distance may have been the priority metric for me, but today, I'm all about my pace. To me, this is the one that I keep close eye, a close eye on, and with Lighthouse, it's pretty much the same, and we're gonna find out. Um, the metrics are made available, obviously, for the Lighthouse score. And like I said, some are going to have a bit more weight than others. As such, the majority of your performance score will come from a minority of metrics. It's kind of like losing the popular vote and somehow still becoming president. Anyhow, uh, the, perf the performance score is made of six metrics, and we're going to take a look at them. Now, these performance metrics, I'm going to go through them in the same order that you would see them in your audit and your report. Let's start. First, Contentful Paint. FCP, for short, measures how long it takes the browser to render the first piece of DOM content after a user navigates to your page. Essentially, it's a first semblance of content that shows up on a page. Now, below on this slide, you're going to see um, uh, a series of timings and what constitutes good, meh, and needs work. Now here, two seconds and faster, considered good. Four seconds and above, needs work. Between two seconds and four is kind of like meh. So you be the judge. Now the speed index is the next metric, and it's one of my favorites, in fact. 
Uh, it measures how quickly content is visually displayed during a page load. Now, um, here you can see the uh, timings that are involved in terms of what's good, what's so-so, and what needs work. This is something that I'd love for you to take a closer look at because it's a really good metric. Largest contentful paint. Now, the largest contentful paint, LCP for short, um, reports the render time of the largest image or text block visible within the viewport. This is something that you're going to see is very important a little later. Next up, we have the time to interactive. TTI measures how long it takes a page to become fully interactive. And again, here you can see the metrics, so you have to keep that in mind. And here we have the TBT, total blocking time. TBT measures the total amount of time that a page is blocked from responding to user input. Now, um, this is basically adding up all the long task overages. Now, long task is 50 milliseconds or less, or more, pardon me. <laughs> and um, so any long task that you have throughout your page, the overage is added up and that becomes the TBT. And lastly, we have the cumulative layout shift. Now, bear with me, this is a long one. It measures the sum total of all individual layout shift scores for every unexpected layout shift that occurs during the entire lifespan of a page. Um, in plain English, it's like your page is janky. That's it. In fact, um, this used to be an experimental metric that was called the layout jank API. So it's matured to become the layout shift. Um, it's not a uh, timing metric, but it's something that you want to take uh, a look at at some point. But what about the weights? Do you even lift, bro? <laughs> let's talk about weights. Um, let's look at the metric weights in reverse descending order. And that starts with the layout shift that we just talked about. Now, this is worth only about 5% of your uh, Lighthouse score. So what this, this means simply like, eh, you might not want to spend too much time on it, but at least you know what it's worth. But where it gets a bit more interesting is the following. Speed index, first contentful paint, time to interactive, all worth 15% of your score. So together, that's 45% of your score that you may want to take a look at, especially when, if one goes south. You might want to prop it up to make sure that you can achieve a, a bit of a better score. And lastly, the largest contentful paint and total blocking time. Together, they make up 50% of your score. Oh, look at that, the camera at the top right corner and it's jiggling. Um, you might remember that about 14 slides ago, I mentioned this. The majority of your performance score will come from a minority metrics. These two metrics right here constitute 50% of your score. I consider these two absolutely a P1 and if they go south, your score goes south as well. Now, let's look quickly at some additional data. Um, do you have any idea what the lighthouse, the median lighthouse score is across the web? I'm going to give you 3,000 milliseconds to figure it out. Okay. It's 49. That is correct. The median lighthouse score is a failing grade. Now, you see the camera at the top right? It's jiggling. You might want to share that on Twitter. Um, let's look at that same data, but here in uh, the distribution of scores across 6 million sites. You can see the majority are getting a score between 25 and 50, just, just under 2 million sites. Now, if we start to look at this, oh, look at that, the camera at the top right, and it's jiggling. Let's go. Now, if we start to look at this in more familiar color coding, the red, the green, and the yellow, you see that 50% of sites are essentially not passing. 11% are doing very well, and 40% are like, meh. And again, top right corner, you see the camera jiggling. So, in conclusion, already, pardon me, um, we have six metrics to optimize, or at least work with. But these are not rules. They are rigorous, rigorously researched recommendations, essentially, uh, guidance. Um, we also now know what each metric weighs. So you'll know where to put the effort in if it goes south and to improve your lighthouse score. 
but ultimately, the key is to optimize, uh, optimize for your immediate use case, like I did for when I'm running. I used to look at the distance, but now I absolutely look at pace. That's what's most important to me. And with that being said, you'll be able to achieve a 100 score, just like our man, if you know who that is, Wilt Chamberlain did back in the days. Thank you very much and have yourself a great time.